Thanks for staying with us on Headlines Now. We're on to some more news now. In the wake of the Ayodhya verdict, which will be delivered on the 24th of the month, the government is taking some precaution measures. Bulk SMSs and MMSs have been banned for the next 72 hours throughout the country starting tonight. This is being done as a precautionary measure to control unwanted riots across the country. And for more on that story, my colleague Sai Manish now joins us live from our newsrooms. Manish, we've seen something like this for the state of Jammu and Kashmir, but this time uh, it's an action for the entire country. Do you believe it's a kind of an overreaction? Well, uh, certainly not. I've been uh, checking out Twitter and of course other uh, uh, networking sites have also got a couple of calls uh, from our viewers. Uh, certainly not an overreaction given uh, the enormity of uh, the judgment on 24th. It will effectively decide who owns the Ram Janma Bhumi. Extremely contentious issues that has divided uh, the nation has led to tension in the past. Uh, and also the government here seems to have learned from the experiences of the past, not just in Kashmir, Evelyn, where of course uh, the prepaid customers were, prepaid SIMs were banned, SMSs were banned, but also from the 2002 uh, riots in Gujarat, the communal riots in Gujarat, during the investigation, investigators there found out that a lot of uh, the mobs were mobilized through SMSs, although it was not the peak of mobile telephony then. Now it's 2010 and of course everybody uh, now has uh, a mobile phone. Also cut back uh, to uh, the winter of 1992 when uh, the Babri Masjid was pulled down. There, uh, just a word of mouth call by uh, leaders of the RSS and the VHP was enough to mobilize car sevaks from across the country. Now, of course, sons and babas in Ayodhya roam around with mobile phones. So the whole potential of mobilizing, this mass mobilization is extremely huge. And given the fact uh, that on 24th, uh, it would effectively settle who owns that disputed piece of land, uh, it would be, of course, a big security concern for the Home Ministry, also for the government to maintain law and order and to prevent uh, mobs from gathering somewhere. This is, uh, of course, not a draconian measure because there are provisions in the Constitution, uh, uh, Evelyn, which can prevent, which can uh, empower a government to prevent emergency measures, of course. That would have been an overreaction. But this, uh, of course, is just a preventive measure uh, which has been taken to prevent any untoward incident from happening. Right. Uh, thanks very much indeed for that, Simon. It's going to be a big thing for many who really feel handicapped without that mobile phone and without sending out those bulk SMSs and MMSs. Well, that's the decision from the government at least. Now, just 24 hours after NDTV Hindu's ground report on the illegal sand quarrying in Vellore and regions of Anyambadi was aired on our channel, the authorities have finally taken action. Six lorries were caught in the act of illegal sand quarrying and have been impounded by the revenue district officer. Our reporter Ramanathan, who got us that ground report from Vellore, tells us more about the crackdown on the multi-crore sand mafia. A day after NDTV Hindu aired the ground report on the sand mafia operating in the Velour and Vanyambadi region, the illegal operators in the area were faced with a root shock today, with at least six of their lorries being seized by the revenue district officer. These lorries were carrying sand, which were illegally mined out of areas which NDTV Hindu had visited in the past few days. These were the sites near Ranipet and Balajapet areas. In fact, the crackdown on the mining this morning was so swift and effective that the entire illegal mining industry came to a standstill. All lorries and trucks lining up at the government quarries instead of the quarries run by illegal miners. The officials have held a round of meetings today and promised further crackdown with more raids in the night when the illegal activities are at their peak. Meanwhile, there has been no response to the allegations of PWD officials being involved in the scams. The sand traders have been very vocal about the involvement of officials. But even after repeated requests by us, high-ranked officials have refused to go on record on this issue. However, what remains to be seen is how long these officials are able to hold perpetrators of this 1,000 crore illegal industry back. Ramanathan for NDTV Hindu. 
Now, there's every reason for the colleges affiliated to the University of Madras to sit up and listen to this report. The university has sent out a rather stern warning uh, to its 100 affiliated colleges that if they don't have qualified teachers, then the affiliated courses will be withdrawn. The Vice-Chancellor made it clear that from the next academic year for all existing courses, as well as new courses, the affiliated co colleges uh, will have to get the university approval and follow the norms as per the latest UG courses. This comes in the backdrop of the directive from the Madras High Court to the university to inspect and access the teachers of the affiliated colleges. Now, staying with uh, news from the education arena and fresh allegations in the school fee row, worried parents have come out this time saying that the government that started a committee has not lived up to implement that very committee they set up. They are demanding the Tamil Nadu government to raise an appeal to vacate the stay on Govindarajan committee. The Tamil Nadu Students' Parents' Welfare Association has decided to bring in all parents' federations together to stage a major protest on the 9th of October. This comes in spite of the Madras High Court's interim stay order and the parents uh, continue to blame the government for their inaction of not challenging the order. Meanwhile, members of the Students' Federation of India have echoed the demands of the parents. They have approached the authorities at the Directorate of School Education. They have accused the ruling government of giving in to the pressure of what they call the Education Mafia. <laughs> Well, up on the other side, we bring you news from the world of sports and the winner to yesterday's question on the Rajnikanth movie contest.